Hello, everyone. Kay here. How is everybody coming to you from Tennessee? I'm just looking at the light. Pretty washed out back there. That's all snow. You didn't see that uh, last time. Let's see. Yeah, all those, this four windows of just snow. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's actually, um, I'm backlit, but I think I've got about as much light as I can get on my face. If there was any way to do this before you go live, you'd think you two would have figured out something by now, but they haven't. You can't see anything on the screen before you go live. In fact, it just has the big window for the for, for the live. That's all you, that's all I can see until you hit the live button and then <laughs> you got to make adjustments. Of course, a lot of people I think go uh, use uh, third-party software. They don't use the uh, YouTube streaming webcam. That's what I'm using. Uh, hello, everyone. We have 41 people here. That happened very quickly. Uh, thank you so much. I look very washed out. I don't know what to do about that. Let's see. Look what I found. I, is that a beautiful flower? <laughs> So I've been unpacking a few pieces of art and things, and this is something my mother made probably 50 years ago. And she made it out of that, you know, this stuff is just like that strap, that metal strapping material. And this almost looks like a, a can of Morton salt or something, but it, it is, it is metal. Uh, I don't know what it was, but she, uh, that's the kind of, my mother was into making things out of scrap iron. And on the back here, this is what's so funny is my mother wasn't, was never, she was thinking of expedience, like get it done, get it made, get it finished. And she was never thinking of, you know, how long is this going to last? And she's literally, literally has this, this flower was taped to the back of this wire with masking tape. <laughs> Anyway, let's see if this light does any anything at all. It helps a little. Oops, there goes the sunflower. <laughs> Okay, then. We do what we can, right? I'm just doing what I can. My production team didn't show up. You know, all the ice and all. I'm joking. I have no production team. I used to have a production team. In fact, uh, I got a text today from, I mean, does that look okay, folks? Or is it just too washed out or whatever? I can't tell. Every time I move, it looks different. So I can't tell. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's constantly shifting on my end. Sorry. I'm just not going to touch it. We'll see what happens. I got a text from my re realtor of this house who I, who I, I had not met until I got here and was at closing. Wait, did we come here before closing? I can't even remember now. I know I was here the day before closing with the realtor. Anyway, she texted. She was in California. And she said, I'm in Los Gatos, California today thinking of you just, you know, because I was California girl and all that. And uh, then. And uh, I said, well, I've been to Los Gatos. I said, uh, I did the, I did the 
Wait, I can't, <laughs> I can't tell you that story because it's one of my questions. Sorry, I'll get back to that. Hold that thought till later. Uh, but that's a big hint. Los Gatos, California is a hint. Okay, uh, we're going to do a seed giveaway and we're going to, the way we're going to do it, this is the first time I've ever done it, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, you can go to my website, to the contact page, and you can send me an email with your address if you answer, if you are the first person to answer the question correctly. And, you know, any insiders who, who know my whole story, just go ahead and disqualify yourselves and be fair. Um, but anyway, let's just go ahead and do that and get it out of the way because um, some people say, well, when are you going to get around to that? Okay, I'm just going to do it right now. I wrote the questions down just like five minutes before we started. Where are they? What happened to them? Oh, when I moved everything. Hold on. Okay, say hello amongst yourselves as usual. Well, I remember, I think I remember what they were, but that's funny. I took so many notes. Okay, something fell out, obviously. And I can't... I'm going to have to think. I only can remember a couple. I'm only going to have to have to think of a couple more. See, I need a studio. I need a studio so bad. Does anybody watch Redacted? Well, so many people. I, I, an American Homestead, um, Man in America, uh, you name it. They all have studios. And that would be so nice. Oh, here we are. I found it. I knew it was here somewhere. Okay, I'm just going to say hello. Um, <laughs> Emmanuel is here. Okay, okay, D Dean, thank you. Nadine from Southern Utah. Janice or Janice. Uh, well... Uh, Jan Janice, is it Janice or Janice? Uh, Janice is asking, my hair is not thick, believe it or not. And the reason it looks like this is because I twist it up when it's wet and I put it over. You've probably seen me with the two clips here. You've probably seen me. And sometimes I wear my hair like that in the videos. Mm. And so when I just let it go, which I just did, it, it, it looks like it's more than it is. But when you twist it up, the little it's very it's very um, thin. I uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it's never thinned out. It's always just been. I've I have a lot of hair, but it's very thin. And it's you know I've just been lucky it hasn't fallen out. I can't tell you why. I don't do anything special. I don't take any special thing for that. So, but thank you for the compliment. Ken is here from Missouri. Delinda Smith. Yeah, you know, I, I would like to watch Man in America all the time. I love, he's so calm and he's got it so together. If, if you've heard his, his story, I heard him being interviewed by my podcaster I always listen to. And, um, and that was very interesting because he, he's totally prepared uh, whole homestead, the whole thing. So he's really got it together. Um, anyway, I would, I would love like a studio like that. You go in, you flip the lights on, they're all set perfectly. They don't change because the light's not coming and going and, and all of that. And, um, you, you just, you just turn everything on and you're, you, you go. And so it's great. Okay. So the, I'm going to have a little seed giveaway. We're going to try this for the first time. And I hope these questions aren't too hard, but I didn't want to ask a question that you could easily just go to my homepage of my channel and look up in the about section. And um, so this really, it, this really is, probably more for people who have been following me for a long time. And, and don't worry, I'll get around. I'll, I'm going to probably do this more. And so, especially as we get 
closer to planting seeds. <laughs> um, so I am going to, the first question is, uh, what insect visitor to Late Bloomer Garden uh, 1.0 was I most fond of? Just going to be quiet while everybody thinks about it for a minute. You have to be more specific, Ken. <laughs> yes, Ken. Ken is the first one to answer, and Ken wins uh, the first package of seeds. Thank you, Ken. Um, and, um, yes, it is the monarch butterfly for sure. And Sue would know that. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you for participating. Uh, the questions get harder. Uh, let's see. Well, I don't, I don't think this one's so hard, especially if you're a newer follower. This is, this is for the, all the newer followers. What a thing have I had the most challenge with here on this homestead? Daryl, you don't even know. Um, I think I would have been more specific if it was an animal. I would have said what animal, but then it's so obvious. Jupe wins. Water leaking from the cistern. <laughs> Bigfoot. Okay, so let's see. It was Ken and uh, Jupe. Actually, I don't know your, what is your real name? You need to uh, send me an email. It's my first name at latebloomershow.com, or you can go there and send it through my contact page. And um, put your address in there and I'll mail you seeds. Now, these won't be big, huge seeds because I'm just going to put them in an envelope and mail them with a stamp. Okay, question number three. This really, I don't know if anyone will get this, but maybe somebody who's followed me the longest will get this. And there are probably, there's only 70 people here so far, so 73. So if you've been here for, if you've been with my channel since the beginning or have gone back and watched the videos from the beginning, somebody like James Talkington, he would, he has seen everything that I've done and commented on everything. So he probably would know this, even though he's a more recent um, subscriber. Um, but the question is, who or what? <clears throat> gave me my start. And by gave, I should say, inspired me to be an edible gardener, you know, as opposed to flowers and shrubs and all of that. Uh, Gina, I don't want you to post any email on the chat. I was just looking at that again today. It said, don't do that. YouTube says, don't do that. Mm, that's a really good guess, Catherine, but um, I didn't know him in the beginning and I'm going back to the beginning. No, I didn't know Daryl until 2018. I had already been gardening for six years. Actually, I started gardening in 2011 and, you know, and then my show uh, appeared after that. Nope. 
Nope. Mm, it might be too tough. It's right in my first episode. It's very clearly stated in my first episode. Okay. Should I should I come up with another question? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I'll have to look for that, Emmanuel. I don't always see my messages on um, Meta. Uh, but I'll look for that. Thanks. No, I did not know her that far back, Denise, but that's a very good, um, that's a very, Jack, no, Jack Davis is, um, no, I didn't know her in the beginning. You see, you see, don't forget, I didn't know anybody. I didn't even have a channel. So all of those people that lived or, or away from me, I didn't know because I, I only met them after I started my channel. But I was inspired to become an edible gardener before I, thought about doing the channel. I don't know who that is. Thank you, Rachel. Okay, so, um, I'm going to uh, skip that one. And I'm going, I have another question here that I'm going to, I'm going to ask you what you think of, of, about me. And then I'm going to turn that back and you're going to tell me, what do you think I enjoy or what have I told you over and over that I enjoy most about gardening? No, Betty, my mother was as shocked as she could be that I did the whole gardening thing. <laughs> No, the aspect, Daryl, not the specific. All of those things I do really enjoy, every gardener does, but for me, that is not, those are not the thing I enjoy most. Okay, I'm just going to wait a couple more seconds and see if anybody gets it. <laughs> well, I have to give it to Janice. Or Jan Janice, Janice, uh, because you covered it. You had three things in there. But yes, I just love watching plants grow, especially when they sprout. It's just like, wow. I just absolutely love it. And I was going to mention, so Janice, be sure and send me an email. And um, I'll mail you some seeds. All of those are all, all of those are just wonderful. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, okay. So what, it, what do you got? What do you guys, ladies and, and gentlemen, uh, what do you enjoy most about gardening? We probably, we probably already covered it right there <laughs> with all those options. You're welcome. It was a good guess. Okay.
Anybody want to offer what they enjoy most about gardening? Daryl, what do you enjoy most about gardening? <laughs> yeah, that's the, both of those are good. That's great, Emmanuel. And, and it's very admirable what all you've managed to accomplish in just a sh uh, short amount of time. You're only 17 and you've already realized one of your dreams. <laughs> I, I'm quite a bit older than you and I haven't realized all of my, I don't know if I've realized any of my dreams actually. Hey, hey, there's Doug. Uh, <laughs> hey, Doug. Hey, Stacy. Thanks for tuning in. Exactly. I know the eggplant is such a tiny seed and you get something that big. It's crazy. Wow. So Janice says, I have, I'm assuming that should say gardened for years when working full time and also playing music from coast to coast for 47 years. What music do you play? An instrument and sing or just an instrument? Yes, well, Denise, there's always thinning. <laughs> I have a video on thinning. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Lonnie gives uh, tomatoes to the food bank. Everybody say, say hi to Doug and Stacy. We've been blessed. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to move along to... Uh, and uh, a suggestion that Denise had, and um, I think it's a great idea to start talking about, we're getting to the end of January, and especially for beginners, this would be uh, to get your pad and paper and write some things down, uh, because you're going to be needing to start to get things that you need, and you don't want to wind up like I have so many times and just be... Oh, just I just did it recently, the garlic, you know, it was like the last minute, the last day you could plant before, I don't know, December and and I didn't have something I needed. And so if you get every everything that you need, let's talk about what you think you're going to need and uh, make yourself a list and, and all of that. So I just wanted to you want, you're going to want a list of seed catalogs and I was just going to show you what I've. Uh, received so far, uh, which isn't much, and that could be because we haven't had much much mail at all in a week. We have been I haven't been out of the driveway in ten days, and luckily I'm prepared, so I didn't have any need to go out. But uh, this is a great catalog territorial. This is where I have bought. Let's see, I bought garlic. I I bought. Um, my, um, oh, Catherine, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. I bought, uh, my, all my cover crop seeds I bought from Territorial, uh, very good company. And I, I've never bought anything from this, but I guess they share, um, your name and address. And so I, I got this, I don't know, has anybody ever, uh, ordered anything from, Young, I believe you would set, call that Young Seeds and Plants, family operated, owned and operated for over 117 years. Has anybody ordered from here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> oh, thank you, Doug. Uh, I, I mean, it looks it looks much colder where you are, but we just happen to have gotten this combination of snow, rain, ice, freezing, below zero. It's just been that kind of week, so I haven't even been down the driveway. Uh, wash tub, bass, and singing, and... The Roan Mountain Hilltoppers Traditional Mountain String Band. How cool is that? Roan Mountain? I was on Roan Mountain. Isn't Roan Mountain bald on top? Or am I thinking of Bald Mountain? And is Roan Mountain in Tennessee or, in, or Virginia? I'm going back a few decades. Yes, that's true, Daryl. Thank you, Doug, for that. <sighs> Thank you so much, Catherine. Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna do a screenshot of that because I won't remember the exact name. The Roan Mountain Hilltoppers Traditional Mountain String Bed. And you play wash tub bass and singing. And I don't know what's macking. What is, I don't know what's macking and managing. But that, that sounds like a lot of work. And you're working full time as well? Wow. Uh, let's see. Doug, Gina is asking you to start a band because she loves your voice. <laughs> Doug does have a good voice. Um, Rob's allotment gardening is here. Welcome. We just had our seed giveaway. I hope you didn't miss it. We've only got 65 people. Last week, I, I put a mention in on Facebook. I don't know if that made a difference, but we had a lot more people last week. But uh, we got... Wow. I'm going to have to check that out, Janice. Yeah, me too, Lynn. <laughs> I mean, I, I really enjoy the winter and then just real winter and get a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff done and then gardening. But the back and forth, it gets warm, it gets hot, it gets warm. I mean, it gets Warm, it gets cold, it gets warm, freezing. Okay, so I was going to say, um, I got sidetracked. So Dixondale Farms, if you're doing uh, onion starts, they're a great place to order. They have all the instructions. They, they, they're not, their fertilizer is not organic, if that's important to you, but they, the, the great thing about if you don't want to start from seed, which I've been told by Mark, my friend Mark, is the better way to go. Um, if you don't want to start from seed, uh, they will send you your starts and they will look at it, look at your zip code and send them to you when you need to plant them. So there's no sort of missing, missing the, the right time. You go ahead and order and then they send it when it's the right time for you. And then this is a great um, catalog, Southern Exposure, Seed Exchange, Saving the Past for the Future. Love it. I've got quite a few of their seeds. Okay. So, and I just wanted to mention, um, it, just in terms of seeds, if you are looking for seeds, I am an affiliate. You can get a, use my discount code. And underneath each video, including the live stream, you will see the various, I, uh, I'm i an affiliate for Haas tools. They have all the tools. They also have seeds. Um, they have fertilizer. It's not organic. Um, but they have a lot of equipment like um, irrigation equipment, 
and you know, uh, handmade tool. I mean, call them handmade. Well, they're made in the U.S. They're you know wooden metal tools, and anything you order there, you can get a discount with my code. And survival garden seeds, and they have a new ultimate medicinal herb collection, which you know I would say off you know off the top of my head that my medicinal plant videos did better than any other videos. Uh, this past year. So um, you do want to be growing some medicinal plants and making making medicine. So if this is if this is something you need to stock up on, if you just want to get the package and keep it in your refrigerator, you know, it'll last for years and then you'll have it. So check that out and be sure and get my discount code. Okay, so let's see. Soil amendments. Um, we had a discussion a little while ago, Daryl and I did about, um, azomite. Now I have always called it azomite. And if you, if you remember me saying azomite, then yeah, that's what I've always called it. Daryl explained this to me once before and I forgot it, it didn't sink in, but I'm going to try to make it sink in now because see, I'm, always, I'm a grammar freak. And if I write it down like that, azomite with the dash over the A, that's a long A. That means A, not A, uh, <laughs> or A. Uh. It's not A, uh, it's not A, uh, it's Azomite. The reason being the company, he said, discovered a deposit, this rare deposit of, of uh, minerals, and they decided to call it A to Z minerals, and they just made up, an, up the name Azomite. Isn't that cool? I, I I didn't know that until he told me. But Daryl said, and I mean, I haven't done any kind of a trial, but I've been using azomite for a long time. I don't always use it because I don't always have it. It is not inexpensive. Uh, I don't always have it. And you, you know, half the time when you're planting, you think, oh, I want to plant some seeds today. You just run out and you use what you have. You use a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And you go, well, I didn't have bone meal today, but I have so-and-so. And, you know, I didn't have az azomite, but I have so-and-so. And, and But he said that he has noticed a huge difference in his garden. And if you've watched Daryl's videos uh, that I've done, you know he has a fabulous garden. So... Anyway, uh, in terms of, you know, look around near you for nurseries that have nursery supplies. Um, if you're in Kentucky, there's a uh, an Amish place. Let's see if I can get the name real quick. Uh, and I wish I was closer. But um, let me grab it real quick. It's called um, Martin's uh, Martin's Produce Supplies. Yeah. So um, you might want to check that out. Martin's Produce Supplies in Liberty, Kentucky. Their number six zero six seven eight seven nine three eight nine six zero six seven eight seven nine three eight nine. If that's anywhere near close to you, and we have one in McMinnville. Uh, Denise, do you remember the name of the one in or, or Daryl? Do you remember the one in McMinnville? Um, I'm trying to think of the name of it, but it's got really good. Um, uh, really good. Um, Lots, lots of uh, amendments and mulch and bark, and uh, it, it's really worth going there to save money if you've got a lot of stuff you want to buy. You know, if you just need one thing, you know, I often just ordered on Amazon, and I know that's not great, but I do. Um, so that's um, that's something you need to be thinking about. If you're a beginner, especially, you know, you need seeds, you need soil amendments, you need seed trays. We're going to start seeding. Well, I've already started seeding and people in Texas or Texas have already started peppers. Uh, it's way too early to start tomatoes and peppers here. 
I'm not ready at all for that. I'm still hanging pictures and trying to go through boxes and, and, and get stuff out um, to make my, my living here more enjoyable. Uh, that was, that's my goal for uh, this and next month is to, to do that. And so um, I should have my bean pictures up online tomorrow for you to order my seeds. I know a couple of people just spontaneously ordered, but I, I don't have them listed yet and I need to. I'm going to be I'm going to be selling the uh, Kushaw squash, which is a southern heirloom. And um, I've got a, uh, an extra supply of uh, black yard long beans. Who sent me those? I'm trying to think now. Was that Emmanuel? Might have been Emmanuel that sent me those. Uh, and the cowpeas that I originally got, the creams that I originally got from Sharon at Sharon's Natural Gardens. Um, and I have the Hutterite beans and the um, My Family Heirloom Wild Goose Pea, to name a few. So I'll be posting those hopefully tomorrow. Uh, the uh, internet has been going in and out. And so I am actually on my hotspot now. And I'm so glad that it's working. Let's see. It just says Liberty, Kentucky. I don't know if it's West Liberty or not. Um, yeah, it's too early here, Rob, also. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> okay. So Janice back, back. Did you answer me before? Because I got, I got sidetracked. Is Roan Mountain bald on top? Because if it is, that's where I got in a whiteout. We got on the top of that and we we're in a whiteout and it's bald and you couldn't see which way the trail was to go down. <laughs> uh, Daryl, I have a gallon and a half of wild goose peas. So I'm hoping people order a lot. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to catch up on it, see if I missed anything in the comments. Well, I'd like to go there this year. I just don't go anywhere anymore, it seems. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Okay, so um, what else? What else do people need? You, seed trays, grow lights, and I am an affiliate for Grow It LED. That's a U.S. family-owned company in California and they assemble all of their lights in California and, and you'd be hard pressed to find another company that does that. Um, 
I love their lights because they're customizable. Uh, if you order something on Amazon, you get what you get uh, because it was packaged in China and shipped across the ocean. <laughs> uh, but uh, if you uh, if you order from Grow It LED, like for example, uh, I wanted longer cords because I knew <laughs> at the time I was thinking the cords would need to go up to the ceiling and over and then down the wall. I, I don't know. So I, I, he put extra long cords on there. And uh, I also like the fact that there is a dial. Well, first of all, the, the light that I bought, uh, I di actually didn't buy it. They sent it to me and I reviewed it and so forth. And I still use it. It gets very hot. Uh, you have to be careful not to touch it. It doesn't have any um, blinders. What do you call the shades? little shades on the sides that I had the grow it led. They put little shades on the side. Cause I said, you know, if your eye is, if you're at, sitting and you're at eye level with your light, that, that light is really coming at you, you know, into your eye. And so I, I had them put these shades on the sides and uh, longer lights. And then there's a dial to adjust the amount of light. And uh, there's on, also an on off switch. And the one I got from this other company that was uh, from China, uh, you had to plug it into the, you know, it's a big plug, a uh, big grounded plug, and you have to plug it into the wall and unplug it to turn it off. No, no on off switch. So uh, those are some things to be thinking about when you buy a grow light. You want an on off switch, trust me. And to have the, the dial so that you can adjust the light is also great. So you can get a 5% 5 5 discount if you order uh, from Grow It LED and you would be supporting a, a, um, a, a USA made product um, and a family owned company. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, you're gonna need grow lights, you're gonna need trays. I've used uh, several different companies. You know, I've used uh, trays from Haas, I've used uh, trays from, uh, Oh, what is it called? Mmm, um, they're sturdier. And uh, I really liked that aspect because some of the trays that I've bought, you you know, after a season, they're split down the side and they leak and, or they have a little hole in the bottom and it's just, <laughs> it gets frustrating. Uh, so to have a tray that lasts you two, three years, even though you pay more, it, to me is worth it. Uh, let's see. Um, spider farmer. Oh wait, spider farmer. Hmm. No, spy. Is that the one from China? That may be the one I had. Um, I think it was. I think that. Uh, I think it. Yeah. Yes, bootstrap farmer. I, you know what I was thinking, Sue? I was thinking, I, I almost said uh, barefoot farmer. I'm going, barefoot farmer is a person, Kay. And I'm going, buh, buh, something farmer. Thank you for saying that. Bootstrap farmer is where I get my trays. And, um, and, and the cells that go in the tray. The six cell units that go in the trays. There, it, it holds eight, I think, or 10. I think it holds 10 six cell trays within one tray. Mm. Right, right. It, like I said, uh, anybody needing any of this equipment, you want to be thinking about going ahead and getting it now. Uh, use my link uh, to get five or 10. Let's see, I think somebody, and of course, IV Organics, if you're getting plants, I, they, right now, Ivy Organic, uh, they have a relationship. Ivy Organic is, is plant care products, but and it's a family-owned company uh, in the U.S., and they make everything in the U.S., all organic plant care products. In addition, uh, they have a plant sale early in the year. He has an arrangement with Dave Wilson Nursery, who's one of the best, and I just looked at their website today ivorganics.com. Is it up here still? 
No, it's, oh yeah, here it is. And uh, this was a December sale that that is evidently going on through January, and you can get um, if you order a certain thing, then you get something extra. There's free shipping on all orders, USA only. Limited times, uh, limited times special sale ends January 31st. And uh, they have blueberry grapevine, and they actually can't send to some California counties. Uh, but they have blueberry grapevine, potted plant, sunshine blueberry, boysenberry, triple crown blackberry. I must have ordered like 10 plants last year. Baba red raspberry, um, pomegranate trees. Yeah, I got last year I got two pomegranate trees. The raspberry, the triple crown blackberry, um, the boysenberry, and yeah, I think that's all I got last year. Um, but I'm just looking at that sunshine blueberry plant. Now, if you, for whatever reason, decide not to go to Ivy Organics and you get 10% off if you use my code, uh, you know, Stark Brothers is a great company too, and they have all kinds of plants. And uh, they have a one-year warranty on their plants. So that might be, especially for beginners, you, you could make a mistake, you know, and, and um, you send them a picture and then they'll replace the plant. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, what else might you need? You need your seeds, you need your seed catalogs, your seeds, your, your trays, your amendments, your um, seed starting mix. It's really a good idea to get sterile seed starting mix. And I'm just going to repeat this tip in case anybody uh, doesn't know. I'm sure you do, but in case you don't, this has made a huge difference for me in, in my seed starting because I, I start all my seeds in my uh, dining area. And so you wind up with all these gnats. And before I did this trick, I had so many gnats and I had fly traps everywhere. And um, and all you do is somebody wrote and said, you you pour boiling water into your pot. Make sure it's a metal pot, <laughs> not plastic. Uh, you you your pot of uh, potting um, seed starting mix, and you pour boiling water in that a commensurate amount for the however much you, you're starting you're using, and you get it damp not sopping, but just you get it damp, you start up with a wooden stick and you put the lid on and you just leave the lid on for like, I don't know, for half an hour. You can leave it on longer, it doesn't matter. And it'll kill all those eggs. And for some reason that all the, even the, even the sterile stuff I have found, you get all these flies flying around your, your plants. So that has really, really been helpful to me. Um, let me get back to the chat. I'm still looking at IV Organics. Great company, by the way. Um, ah, and Anna says you can bake it. Well, I've, I use so much. That would be hard, but yeah. She says you can bake it for 40 minutes at 225. <laughs> 94 are here. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I hope you subscribe, click the bell for notifications, scroll down and click all so you won't miss any uploads. Uh, we have a wonderful community. As you can see, everybody's very engaged and uh, positive. And we talk about gardening, but we also talk about world events. And we talk about health and we talk about cooking and food and everything that's related to uh, sustainability and uh, trying to stay healthy naturally. And uh, so those are all things that, and, and we just want to survive, you know, we want to survive and thrive. So um, let's see what else. Uh, so I think I covered all of that. And I did the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my Roselle, uh, uh, Gina this week, she said, don't forget to sprout your Roselle. And I'm going, okay. 
And I went and got that all going and did it. And I thought, I probably didn't need to do it that soon, but it sprout the Roselle from seeds from Jack Davis in uh, Phoenix. Um, not my own seeds because I never got any seeds. All those Roselle I had last year. Once again, it froze before they made seed. So that's probably why Gina said start earlier. And uh, I'll, I'll put them out as soon as I can this year. We'll see. Um, I really hope to be able to make my own seed this year. And I also started, uh, because I had a little extra space in the tray, I started red Malabar spinach because they were with the seeds because I had also gotten those from Jack. And red Malabar spinach is a really cool, it's actually a succulent. It's not really spinach. I'm not sure why they call it. I forgot the reason why they call it spinach. Maybe somebody knows. And um, the, I like to get the leaves when they're about that big, not too, not too big, about that big. And then you... You uh, you just slice them a couple of times and, and put them in uh, a few leaves and you put them in a stir fry and it, it adds it adds an interesting texture and a, a lot of nutrition. Uh, let's see. Mm. Daryl, um, Daryl, did you see Deborah's uh, question? She's asking about the sweet potato slips. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Um, oh, thank you uh, for uh, about my sweater. This is another sweater that I knitted. I, I, I don't actually know. I may have worn it once. And I may not have worn it at all. I don't remember exactly. But I'm noticing that it has this, I did the same uh, ribbing lengthwise. There is ribbing around the cuff. I have a short little rib, less than an inch rib on the end, and then a one inch rib all the way up. And then this is, this is uh, one yarn. And then this is a different, this is like a mohair yarn. So I did something different, you know, like a, a lacy thing here. So, um, but it's just, you know, I just never get around to wearing my sweaters and I thought I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to wear my sweaters, uh, a different one each live stream until, <laughs> until, until we start planning the, the, the garden out and I, and we'll have to figure out another time to do this. Um, when people have the time, we'll see. So let's see. Um, 17 of my, out of 20, my Roselle came up. So that's, that's good. I've got all of my cats in and I heard something over there. <laughs> I think he was scratching on the window because the birds were on the porch. I was talking to a friend today. This this is like a really interesting concept. But the more we talked about it, the, the more difficult it really sounded. You know, if uh, if if war comes to our shores, and and I, I don't know, I would I bet you if you went out and you polled uh, just a hundred random people on the street and you asked them if we if we are at war, they would say no. Um, but right now, our our military is engaged in two different conflicts uh, right now. And uh, a lot of our resources are going towards that. And I, I bet a lot of people don't even realize that. But if it happened, to, you know, if, if somebody goes nuts and happens to do something crazy and things wind up on our shores, <laughs> um, the only, <laughs> the only produce that, uh, that we would be able to, grow is in a greenhouse and I don't have one. <laughs> I know a lot of people have greenhouses and I don't have one. I really wish I did. I wish I could cover my entire 5,000 square feet down there just because I don't know what's falling on it. You know, it's, uh, it's been really interesting lately because I haven't seen a lot of um, air traffic 
And, uh, you know, like we were getting in the fall, oh my goodness, it was just ridiculous. And, um, and I don't, I mean, it's, it's when you're, when you're in an airplane, it's very cold up there. So I don't know if the cold has anything to do with it or if there's another strategy, what, what, what's, what's going on. Um, but, uh, my friend and I were talking about designing a greenhouse that you could put on a trailer and you could move it. You could move it to where the sun is. You could move it, uh, inside your, if you had a shop, um, the, the most ideal thing is if you have a drive through shop, you could, you could tow it in, in one, in, in, in one, uh, of course your shop has to be heated, you know, cause you've got to heat those plants. Oh, the, the whole reason of bringing it inside is so that they have, uh, some warmth at night, but it's an interesting concept, but I just know that, you know, just pulling a, a little dump trailer behind my four wheeler, uh, when you, when you load it up with wet manure, it's, uh, the tires almost flatten out, you know, it's very heavy. And I'm thinking, I don't know if anybody remembers this, but I just remembered this just a second. When I was at the national heirloom expo in 2017, one of the people I interviewed, I did a series of short, like five minute interviews with a lot of different people. There was, there was a, an, an original grain uh, farmer. He grew spelt, not einkorn, but he grew spelt. And I, I interviewed him and I interviewed a guy that traveled around. He had a, I'm trying to think if the, if the actual driving part of the vehicle was attached to this trailer, I think it was all one thing. And it was a little cab up front. And then the, the whole back was a big box with windows all, all along the sides. And they had raised beds in there and in the, on, on either sides, so you could walk in the middle and then they, and, and they, and they drove it around for, well, it was a teaching vehicle. It was a teach you know, teaching people how to garden. They would, they would drive around and teach people how to garden and they had raised beds. They had drip irrigation as well as Oyas. Remember I used to use Oyas in California. I still have my Oyas here. That is uh, a company called Grow Oya. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Grow. Gosh, let me just look that up. It's been so long since I was in touch with them. Yeah, it's G R O W O Y A. So capital G R O W O Y A, Grow Oya. And it's a ceramic uh, pot that you put. Uh, you can put it in a raised bed. You can put it in uh, containers. Uh, it were it was great for California because we it never rained, and so you could fill up this vessel. I had a, I had them all over the place. Uh, you could fill up a vessel. You could dig a hole, put it in a raised bed. You fill it up to the top, and underneath the soil, you have this vessel like this big, full of water, and it's ceramic. And so, and there's a little plastic lid on it so dirt doesn't fill it up. And then the roots of the bushes grow around it and just make this hole. So when you take it out, it's literally all roots of whatever is around it. And I love using them and they've, they've sent me stuff. And, uh, but I really haven't used them here because, you know, it rains quite a bit. Uh, but anyway, that he had one of these vehicles, uh, you know, on big wheels and there was a big step up and, but um, yeah, you wouldn't, I don't know how you would keep the plants warm. You know, if you made it small enough to drive into a shop, then you, you really kind of need a, uh, a door on the other side to drive it out. And, you know, we were just, we were just brainstorming about this because, you know, I still don't have a greenhouse. I still want to be able to grow, to grow edible plants uh, without, you know, stuff falling on them from the sky. Um, Jackie, Jackie one RN is here. Mm. 
Well, yeah, Danny and Wanda have everything that I want. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, let's see. Let's see. Paul Groover is here. Paul, that's what I've been doing. I did that year before last. I did that last year. And I told Daryl the other day, I was never going to do the water again. I don't want all those flies. He doesn't have a problem with flies, but I, I always had so many flies. I just, it's just so easy doing it this way. And then uh, what we're talking about folks is uh, it's too soon to do it this way. I mean, I looked at the dates on that video. When I did that second video, I looked at the dates and I believe I put the sweet potatoes in at March 28th, if you can believe. I put the sweet potatoes in a, it was literally a seed tray. It had some slits underneath it. And then I put it in another seed tray so, so the water wouldn't drip all over. And I filled it full of potting soil. And then I just laid skinny. I used, I just picked out some really skinny sweet potatoes and I laid them in there on the side. I'll have to show this in a video again. Um, and I put a lid on it so it wouldn't dry out. And I left it in the garage until, so let's see, Randy came on June the 1st and we planted the sweet potatoes on June 1st. And I, pull, I, I pulled it this tray out of the garage. It had started to sprout and I pulled it out outside. It was outside from like, you know, the end of April on, you know, in the daytime I would pull it out. And it just had all of these sprouts coming up and I didn't clip the sprout, uh, the um, slip. I didn't clip the slip. I didn't clip the slip off. I literally just, <laughs> I, I had the, I had the tray, the whole tray was full of roots and I just used a knife and I cut it like a tray of brownies, just like that, like 12 pieces like that. And that's what I planted. So, you know, every piece had uh, sprouts coming off of it. And it was just so e so much easier to me to do it that way. So that's that's the way I'm going to do it from now on. Oh, it's Tony from Simplify Gardening in Wales. <laughs> Please, hey everyone, say hello to uh, Tony at Simplify Gardening. Um, yes, I will do that, uh, Janice. I'm going to make a note. We'll do that next time. Talk about that next time. Wait, you had surgery? <laughs> what did I miss? Did I, I miss the memo? Sorry. I hope you're okay. That's a good idea. How are they using Betty in from Canada is says that she's seen people converting old school buses into greenhouses. How are they heating them? And then do they have a, a, like a clear see-through roof? Is that the idea? Because you've got to be able to keep the plants warm. The Hoyas. What happened to the Hoyas? I don't know what that, what. If you're talking about the Oyas, the Grow Oyas, yeah, they're all in the shop. Let's see. Okay.
Oh, we did. Okay. Oh, Donna's here. Donna, you missed the seed giveaway. We did that right off the bat. So make sure you're here on time next week. <laughs> oh, I know people can't always be here on time. Ken, did you look that up? <laughs> Ken, I, Ken must have been madly looking up the answer to the uh, third question that I asked that I had to abandon because nobody knew. But the person that, because the question was who or what inspired me to be an edible gardener. And I met a biodynamic farmer who uh, made compost and he also taught little workshops. I say little workshops. He taught workshops at the um, Waldorf grade school where my son was. And uh, one day he was over there teaching uh, them how to um, uh, I guess, I guess, Supercharge is not the right word, but how you charge up water with with the compost, and they were stirring it into a, in a vortex, and um, and you know we got to talking, and you know that I, so I met him through my son's school, and he came over, and he said, uh, I, I he 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 his instruction to me was plant two citrus trees and surround them with nasturtium and herbs. And so I did that and I was just off to the races and I never looked back. So it was just one thing after the next. Um, I am good, Tony. Thank you. Uh, we have been snowed in. I haven't been out of the driveway for 10 days. Uh, my driveway goes down and up. And so it's icy. And I talked to also my neighbor who, well, he has to come down his driveway, but he's got to go up. Anyway, he hasn't been out of his driveway in 10 days either. So the people going up and down the street are going about 20 miles an hour. So I know it's icy. I'm sure when you get on the highway, it's different. But um, but today was the first day it's gotten up to 32 and everything is dripping. And it's just since I've been sitting here, I have seen... Uh, the icicles hanging off of the um, gutter, just one by one, they've melted. Uh, I actually showed a picture of that on my community page this morning. So right now there's only one left. There were several, which reminds me, he told me today, did you know that if you, um, his gutters go down and then he has a, you know, the accordion drain pipe, not just the smooth drain pipe, but he's got that black kind of accordion perforated drain pipe that goes out into the yard that takes the, the water away from the foundation of the house. And he was saying that if you, uh, if you go up and you bang on, his was all frozen. And if you go up and you bang on your gutter and it sounds solid, that's not good. That means that the water that's been that's melted off your roof has frozen in your gutter. <laughs> and that's what causes the gutter to overflow and cause icicles. Well, I didn't know that. And uh, and so I went out. I only did it to one. I did it to one. I thought, well, hmm, let me go see. I, I, I'll go bang on my gutter and see what, what it, you know. And so I banged on the gutter and... Uh, It was, it was solid. And I heard a little trickle in there, but I banged on it. It was like really solid. And so I banged some more and then I heard this. So pieces of ice were falling down in there. You know, mine, mine uh, goes underground. You know, as soon as it gets down to the bottom, it goes underground, not deep though. It's, it's literally it's just probably the uh, four inches, just just enough to get it um, level with the ground. It, there's a four inch PVC pipe that all the gutters connect to that go around the house and they go down to the cistern. So anyway, um, uh, just bang on those gutters and see if they're frozen, folks. 
Let's see, what else? Uh, 409. Let's see if anybody has a greenhouse and uses a solar generator to heat their greenhouse, can you, can you say so? Do you, what, Tony, what do you have? I know you have some kind of heat in your greenhouse, don't you? You've got a, you've got a big greenhouse. Are you still growing giant vegetables? When I was at Tony's at, in Wales, uh, he was growing giant uh, mallow. Marrow, ma wait, mallow. It's like a giant zucchini. It's like this big around and this long. I don't know. <laughs> and he had, he had uh, the, he, he works for the fire department and, and they had uh, twin bed frames that they were um, de decommissioning. I guess we get, got new ones. And so he had taken the uh, the bed frames and put them in his garden, and he was going to grow the giant vegetable inside that bed frame. And so could you imagine a zucchini that was like the size of a person laying in that bed frame? That's what he was up to when I was there. You are growing a lot of good giant vegetables. The only reason to grow giant vegetables, everyone, is just for the competition, the fun of it. I don't think you eat those huge things, but how do you heat your greenhouse, Tony? A <laughs> hundred and thirty-one pounds marrows. What did I say? Mallow, marrow. Yeah, marrows. Okay. Two thirty-six foot long tunnels. Diesel, like D I E S E L. Mm. So you keep those going twenty four seven. Those heater, those heaters. And are the what do you what do, what is the do you have six millimeter plastic or what do you have over? I can't remember. It seems like it was plastic. You have over your tunnels. Uh, yeah, Caroline, that, uh, that's a very famous video that Kristen, I want to say Kristen Dirksen or something, her channel, she's got millions of subscribers and that particular video had millions of views. It was amazing. He was growing humongous grapefruit and all kinds of stuff in this greenhouse. And there was like three feet of snow outside. It was crazy. You have a dedicated shed for what? Well, Daryl doesn't grow sweet potatoes in a container, but, you know, they kind of, they, it's funny, they kind of, they don't go down very deep. They kind of come up in like a mound around that slip. It's funny. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> Uh, has anybody ever sprouted a lemon seed and gotten a lemon tree? Now, um, Teresa, you need to watch my video on grafting because I, I did a video with a guy in California who was really into grafting and he showed the three different methods. We did, uh, we did a, a graft something for me and, and he was saying that, you know, uh, and I'm sure other people will confirm that, that, you know, most of the fruit trees that you're going to you're going to buy in a nursery have been grafted from seed stock. I mean, from uh, root stock, you know, they 
they take a a you know something that grows good roots <laughs> and then they put a good tasting they graft a good tasting fruit on top of it so it's interesting uh but i i know some people have planted seeds but i don't know if you if they've gotten actually gotten lemons that tasted good i don't know Yeah, see, Caroline is talking about the thing I worry about. It's like every time it gets windy, your cold frame blows off down the hill. You know, everything blows off. You know, so it's, you know, I, I just feel like I would have to have something really, you know, like tempered glass in, you know, a structure that's built like a house, <laughs> which would cost a fortune. And, and then I would say, well, if I'm not, if I can't produce enough food in there to either make money on or to feed myself, then I've, well, and first of all, I don't have the money to do that. So that's, that's out of the question. Mix is here from Latvia. Latvia. Fantastic. Okay. Caroline says she's replaced them with thicker panels and she's waiting for them to blow away too. Caroline, remind me where you are that you've got such bad wind. <laughs> yeah, that's what the, the one whom Jesus loves says. If you don't graft, then the lemons won't grow from a tree by seed. That's what I thought. Did I say millimeter? I'm sorry. Six mil plastic is not six millimeters. No, that, yeah. Okay. Connecticut, yeah, okay. Oh, Karen, you missed the seed giveaway. We did that at the beginning. You might have been able to answer some of the questions too. Oh, no. We have cicadas every year, I think. We had cicadas this past year. People were complaining about it in the video in my tomato video. <laughs> Getting drowned. And they and the year before that, they were complaining. When I did a video on the ports, they were complaining about my cicadas drowning me out. Well, I <laughs> um well, well, um, uh, Teresa, he can grow, he can grow the the stock out, and then you can graft uh Get get a uh, what is it called a scion? Did I say that right? Scion, scion. You get the scions, and then you just graft it. But watch my grafting video. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Anything else? Do we have? So. Um, Hmm. Okay. Um, some people uh, wonder where we go to get information. And um, cicadas are those, those insects that go under the ground. They're supposed to only come out like every seven years. And then they make all this scratchy noise. It's so loud. At night, especially at night, but all day too, really. And and then they just they leave their little carcasses everywhere. They go back into the ground. Cats love to chase them around. They they move very slow, and they're easy to catch. Cats, it's they're easy for cats to catch, and it's a lot of fun for them to catch them. Um, but they 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 get so loud. It's sort of like living beside a pond that has all those frogs. They're just they're loud.
Oh, that's, you're lucky. You're lucky. Okay, so tomorrow look for the, the bean seed on my website. And I will post that on my community page. So you'll you'll know about that. And then um, yes, thank you, Images in Bloom clarified for us what cicadas are, a type of locust, but they don't bite. They come out to mate and return to the earth. Oh, that's not true. I had it. I had them last year and the year before, Ken. <laughs> and I remember when I was doing my southeastern tour, and I went to Charleston. Charleston, yeah, Charleston. They were. It was in the summer, and they were really loud. See, that would be fun. I don't know what you would do with the shells, but that would be fun. Um, is anyone interested in, in just some resources, places to go for news? I can uh, share some with you. Um, because some people, you know, would like to know more about what's going on, but they don't know where to go to look for it. And you're not going to find it on mainstream media because that's all controlled and and they're only telling you what they want you to know, not what the truth is necessarily. Um, oh, that's interesting. Grafting pear and apple. I would love to do that. <laughs> Jackie, cats can, can, can do things like that. Anna says, yes, please. Um, uh, well, for financial stuff, um, this is this is a recommendation. Uh, I allegedly, and so I is the name, it's YouTube, it's on YouTube. And they, they cover a lot of financial stuff and they post every day, 15 to 20 minute videos. That, and it's not doomsday. Uh, it, it's a, they share a lot of things that people uh, send into them. So you hear from various reports from around the country. And, um, and then the Poplar Report, P-O-P-L-A-R, I think his name is Steve Poplar. Um, he's a city person in Pittsburgh, but he, um, I guess he's a city prepper. Anyway, he talks about uh, the supply chain wars, food shortages, and, uh, and, and that kind of thing. Um, of course, there's uh, Redacted, that's on YouTube too, and, and Clayton Morris used to be a mainstream uh, reporter, a journalist, on-camera journalist, and went out on his own because, you know, he wanted to be able to tell the truth. <laughs> and uh, so he is, he is a good show. He covers, he covers a lot of ground. And of course, there, there are many others. Um, Man in America has a great podcast. Um, uh, wow. Uh, there's so many, uh, but that's just, that's a few you might check out. Um, and then when you watch those, you'll get recommended to others, you know, on the side, YouTube will, will say, well, if you like that one, you might like this one. And so you, that's how you, it's called their recommended. Um, thank you, Linda. Linda's going to church to pray for all of us. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Okay. TV seven Israel news. I don't know that one. Is that TV seven? Is that on television or on the internet? There is a dual emergence this year. I, I would say there's more than a dual. <laughs> I think there's like a quintuple emergence this year. There's so many, so many things are going on, and um, and certain things will be put in front of us to distract us from other things that that are going on in the background that are even 
you know, worse and then, and, you know, they want to scare us about this thing. And so that we're not thinking about what they're doing over here. So we got to really be discerning, but, you know, God tells us to do that in the Bible. He very, 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 well, I think some people have said, I don't know if it's, if, if, if it's exactly true. And I guess it depends on which version you, you read of the Bible. Uh, I prefer just to stick with the King James to get as close as to the original manuscripts as possible. Um, because the more you you change versions and versions and versions and different I, people's ideas of what the actual Bible said, you, you just for me it, you just then you have more questions than answers. And that you, if you stick as close to the the uh, the King James as you can, then to, in my opinion, it's just my opinion. Uh, then. Uh, and, and even 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 Bollinger wasn't perfect, you know. Uh, our pastor says very often there, there'll be a little uh, a little word or, or even just some small minor thing, and he'll says, you know, this is the, if you go back to the original manuscript, this is what it says, and it clarifies the point. But anyway, some people say that it says in the Bible, "Do not fear," uh, like three hundred and sixty-five times, you know. So once for every day of the year, <laughs> I don't know if that's true. I, ha I certainly haven't counted them, but uh, I know that it, and he also tells us to be discerning and not just believe everything you hear, but to have a second witness, you know, always say, well, that sounds pretty interesting. Let me see what else I can find before you make a decision. I sometimes I see things on, you know, various social media, you know, I, I, I of course look at Twitter, but uh, you know, now, now that Twitter is a paid, now that you can make money on Twitter by the content that you, you know, uh, that not me, I don't even try to do that. I'm not verified or anything. I just look at it to try to get a grasp of the overall picture of the news. And, uh, but there's a lot of stuff you just got to wade through and that people are posting just, you know, just to get attention, clicks, and make money, et cetera. So it, it's a, <laughs> you waste a lot of time, and it, it's so it's 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 uh, you can learn a lot on Twitter because they post all kinds of stuff that somehow. I mean, remember before we had internet, and most I think most of you people, that, most of you watching, ha were around before internet. Uh, there might have been like, like, for example, I just, I saw this video, you know, how Doug, Doug was here earlier. You know, how Doug is always posting things that he finds uh, videos and stuff. Um, uh, but anyway, this video was, let's see, let me just get his, his qualification uh, straight. So I'm, so I'm speaking accurately. Um, Let's see. Dr. Dean Burke, PhD, who spent 34 years at the 34 years at the National Cancer Institute. And here in this, let's see, how long is this video? It's a short video. It's a few minutes. Um, he is confirming from the data that fluoridated water causes cancer. And he shows a graph in this and, and this this video, um, just from the style of it and the the style of the furniture and everything, it looks like it's maybe from seventies or eighties. I don't know for sure, but you know they they started fluoridating the water in nineteen fifty one in this country, and I think there, I think there are only a couple of countries in the world that allow it. Ours being one, and you got to wonder why that is. <laughs> and they have never, they have never, they never allowed the, the the our government never allowed the stories. Uh, excuse me, the um, the cancer reports to be published. Uh, uh, they just all said, "Oh, you know, oh, you're going to have the people are going to have so many many fewer cavities." Well, I did a video on fluoride, and I and I tear this whole thing apart. 
in my fluoride video that I did last year. So if you're interested in that, just go back and watch it. But, uh, you know, what they put in the water supply is not calcium fluoride, which actually might have some benefit to the teeth. Um, sodium fluoride, which is what they put in toothpaste, but there's not nearly enough. They have to make that in a lab and, and there's not nearly enough of that to go into the water supply. So that is, that is uh, what rat poisoning poison is made out of. And if you look at the back of any toothpaste that has it in it, it will say, if you swallow this, contact the poison control, right? And then, <laughs> and then the only other thing is like that what goes into the water supply is that they didn't know what to do with all of the, the uh, toxic fumes that were coming out of the smokestacks in the fertilizer plants in Florida. And uh, they, they, it was too costly to try to bury it. And the, the people were complaining about it, it raining down on them in Florida. And so they, uh, they put these scrubbers on the top of the smokestacks. And they, so they somehow scrub this fume thing and they turn it into the, I forget, it's in my video, what that, it, it is a fluoride, excuse me, it is a fluoride, but it is not calcium fluoride, which is naturally occurring, or sodium fluoride, which is rat poison, which is what they put in toothpaste. It is something even worse because it's made from the toxic uh, waste of the fertilizer, fertilizer process, the production of fertilizer. <laughs> you can't, you see, you couldn't make this stuff up, right? I mean, who, who would let that happen to their people, you know? But anyway, so if you, if you, if you if you start doing deep dives, you see a lot of stuff like this, and and we would have I would have never seen that if there was not an, an internet because this the, that video was made, you know they did this data and he had he's holding this graph, you know this is long before you know projections and and um, uh, Microsoft Excel and all those things, you know. So anyway. There's lots of ways to, to, to get information, talk to people, you know, talk to people, you know, that, 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 uh, that want to know what's going on, the truth and, you know, and want the best for our country. So, uh, oh, brother, uh, Caroline said, just read that toothbrushes are no good either. Is that because of the plastic they're made out of? I used to buy the wooden one with boar hair bristles. Can't win. Put un, in under sink filter. Uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, did you see the deer back there? Yeah, they were. Is can you see? Can you see? Uh, that's BJ sitting in the window right there. Well, let's see. She's right there. BJ. Hi, baby. Oh, wait, wait. She's right, right there. Hi. Yeah. She's checking out those deer back there. Um, baking soda and peroxide. Uh, I think somebody, Linda is, oh, Linda went to church. Uh, somebody was telling me baking soda and bentonite clay. I think that's what Stacy had recommended on off grid. Is anybody using that? Um, let's see. Good night, Rob. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, absolutely. Sue is making the comment that AI is going to make it difficult to know what, what is, what is real going forward. I have to agree. I mean, it's just, Kind of frightening, but do not fear, right? Mm. Uh, 
Oh, dual emergence cicadas. <laughs> okay. Does that mean that we're going to get two emergence of, of cicadas, cicadas this year? Boy, it's going to be really noisy. Okay, let's see. Clay. I, I just saw this thing and, and I I don't have a tube of toothpaste. It was another thing that I saw. Man, I see many things and it was it was a I shouldn't talk about it, I guess, if I don't have one in front of me, but there is a color. It's just like a it's like literally this big. It's, it's that, it's like that big on the back of your toothpaste. If you use toothpaste if, and it's and it, like, if the toothpaste tube is like that, you know, has kind of like ridges like that. And then like that. And then the tube, the tube comes out like that. And, and you'll see, you'll see this rectangle and it'll be a color. And it was, it was talking about what the different colors mean. <laughs> And, and I thought, well, I, I, I buy Young Living because I'm a distributor and, and, and they, they have this toothpaste with thieves in it, which has, I just love thieves. It's, it has the formula that su supposedly they, they used in the, in, in Europe or England or wherever, when they had the plague and in, in certain people survived the plague by using clove and some other things. Anyway, they, that's what there's, is in this recipe, and so in and there's thieves in the toothpaste. So I like the toothpaste, and of course I'm a distributor, so I I like to support. So I thought, well, surely there's not one of these little colors on the back of that tube. But I looked at it, and it was there, and it's black and green. I think green meant. I shouldn't even say this, but I, I believe it said green meant it was like all natural and, and blue had like some chemicals and then red had more chemicals and then black meant something. And I'm going, and I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly what it was, but if, if you're interested, look at the back of your toothpaste tube and see if there's a little rectangle on there, see what color it is and see, and you know, do a search online and see if you can figure out what it means. Oh gosh. Why is that Emmanuel? Why did they do that? Oh, Ken, you saw that video? Do you remember what the colors mean? Oh, um, Teresa just um, just posted my fluoride video if you'd like to watch it. Matt the Vegan, we're winding down. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, this is snow behind me. <laughs> BJ. Come here. They want to see you. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. BJ, come here. BJ, come here. She's uh, she's like a very restless uh, cat, you know. There she is. Well, there she is. BJ, good girl. Come here. Is it time? Come here. BJ, want a treat? Come here. Want a treat? Want a treat? She goes, I'm not fooling for, I'm not, I'm not 
fooling for that? No, I'm not. I'm not. Um, <laughs> can't even think. Um, falling for that. I'm not falling for that trick, she said. Uh, they they say it's a community guideline strike or copyright. That's weird. Hans Solo is here from Canada. Cancer is the occupying force after the death of the mitochondria. Metabolic therapy or... <laughs> Thank you, Han Hans. Oh, an ice storm in Arkansas. Well, we sort of I had that here, um, but tomorrow it's getting warmer, so tomorrow I'm going to go see my mother. Um, black square means all chemicals, really? Daryl, is that what it said? Yes, that's what I thought. Green was the best. And so I'm thinking... Wow. Isn't it funny that they actually put that on there, but they they expect the the consumer to do the research on what that means? I just thought it I didn't even know it had to it meant it had anything to mean it meant anything. I never even noticed it before. One ladies man cooking for beginners. Baltimore, Maryland, welcome. That's funny, Emmanuel. I can't, I have, I have no idea. That's true, Red Scout. That's true. I thought xylitol was for breath. I mean, I don't remember. I, I just remember some commercial that used to just say, it is xylitol or something like that. I it's all, but my entire recollection of xylitol. So, well, obviously, if green is no chemicals and black is all chemicals, it's somewhere in between. Yes, that will be nice if some of these kings do fall. <laughs> 100, well, 97. Blue is the next best after green. Okay. That's very interesting. Hey, everybody, if you haven't had a chance to hit the thumbs up, I would really appreciate it if you do. If you have to go, I understand. It's 4.43. We've been on for an hour and 43 minutes. So please hit the like button before you go. Um, I think we covered everything. We had our seed giveaway. I'm, I'm expecting three emails. I'm going to mail some seeds to these three people. I, I wanted to show you what I did today. <laughs> I made eight of these. These are mini loaves of banana bread. And I put hemp hearts there's probably, I, I would say for every serving, there's probably like a t maybe a half a teaspoon in every every little piece, maybe. Uh, hemp hearts, poppy seed, allspice, uh, coconut, sugar, um, duck egg, uh, einkorn flour, which is original wheat. So this is like a little a little loaf of of goodness. And I made I made eight of those. So, <laughs> so I've got one for my neighbor somewhere. So uh, let's see. Okay, it, that I mean that's that's what it seems like it would be, Sue. So that's why I said, I don't, I don't know, you know, 
you'll have to just do your own research. Uh, for the seeds, Ken, well, I said it out loud. I don't want to write it on there, but it's my first name at latebloomershow.com, or you can go through through my website, whatever's easier. <laughs> don't worry, Daryl. You're first in line if I ever if I ever get out on that road again. Oh, I would give anything to have some. Well, I, I would give anything, not anything, but I didn't. I I planted a persimmon tree last year. It never it never did squat. It was just like a twig. It had a few leaves. It got eaten by the deer. We we put wire around it. Uh, it grew a little bit. I put a bigger wire around it, cage around it, and then fall came and the leaves dropped off. I mean, you know. I think when you buy when you buy these bare root trees, I mean it's years, years. Ah, uh, yes, yes, Ken. Send it. Just say hi. Uh, I, I I I'm getting the seeds. Here's my address. That's what you put in the message, and you put your your uh, email address. Thank you, Willie. I appreciate that. Okay, Debbie, see you next time. Dennis is here. And uh, dear three. Well, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about digging everything up, putting it all over there. The sun is not as good over there, but putting it all over there and put a fence around the whole thing. That's what I want to do. Hi, Lisa. We're just getting off. Thank you for tuning in. Cold frame made out of a clear storm door scrap, two by eight. That's a good idea. Mine, my... I would need two of them. If I had two, I could do like that, right? But it also, I think you need to tilt it towards the sun. So so my feeling is always, maybe that's if, if it's just up against the house. But, you know, whenever I see a cold frame, I always see it like my pen's stopping working like that, you know, where it's higher on this side and lower on this side. But you could have two storm doors, my and and they go like that. That open like that. That might be. I mean, what would be great is if it, if it had if it was like you know, you know you know the hoods in the old old timey cars. You know, you had to pull it up and you had to grab the thing and pull the thing out and s stick it down on the thing. And the thing had to go in the hole to hold the the uh, the the hood up. Um, but now, you know, on my, on my truck, you just lift it up. It has its own sort of easy, you know, you just lift it up wherever you stop is where it stops. That would be so cool. If you had a coal frame, you just lift it up and it just stops. You don't have to like grab something to prop it up, hold it up, you know, while you get in there and get something, but you couldn't do it. You couldn't do that. You couldn't do it like that. Cause then you'd have to crawl in from the, the side to get the stuff out. That's that's why you have it slanted because you, you lift it up and then you can get in there. Yeah. I would need a four foot. Yeah. Have a great week, Donna. Thank you. I need a hydronic guy. I don't know what you mean, but <laughs> sounds interesting. I have.
have never tried making flax eggs for baking. No, but it sounds like it's worth looking up. You make it out of flax seed meal or something, just in water. Is that what you do? <gasps> wow. Okay, everybody. Uh, I think the signal is not great, and I am on my hotspot on my phone. The internet's going in and out, so I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, God bless you. I hope you subscribe and uh, tell a friend about the channel, and we will see you next week at 3 o'clock uh, p.m. Central Standard Time on Sunday, and we'll continue to do that through probably through February if, uh, if it goes well. So take care. Thank you so much. And uh, <laughs> thank you, Karen. <laughs>